And, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to come out to, uh, to Essen and, and talk to you today. I'm going to show you some, uh, some slides of Q and explain a bit of the work that we do at Q and um, some of the history of Q. And hopefully, if you're passing through London, you'll call in and see me, and, uh, and I'll, you, you'll be made very welcome. And, and I'll show you some of the trees that you're going to see now, but in, in real life. We collect seed primarily because it's good for con conservation, but also every seed grown is a different genotype, and we can represent that gene pool by growing multiple numbers of seed-raised trees. And they will all grow different, just like we're all the same genus and species here, we are all different. It's exactly the same with trees. And we need that diversity in, uh, in our botanic gardens to do the research work that we need to do. And also representing those gene pools. Just going to show you a few trees now. This is a very rare hickory from China. We thought all the hickories came from North America, and then we realized there was one in China. We thought that genus was missing from the Chinese flora, uh, but this is Caria cathiensis, and I'm, I'm going to conf I'm going to make a confession now. I collected this on the market in Shanghai. Um, walked, we've been looking for it for for years, couldn't find it in the wild. Walking through markets in Shanghai, and they were selling candied pecans. Of course, this is the you know the American pecan is Illinensis. This is a Chinese pecan, and I, I bought a kilo, and he was just about to throw them in the wok. And I stopped him and said, no, I want them raw. Uh, brought them back and, uh, and here they are growing. It took us a long time to work out how to germinate to break the dormancy down of Caryocathiensis. This is the winter bud. This isn't the shoot, this is the bud. It's a really amazing, terrific tree. Uh, so it would be really good to see how this performs. We've got, we only collected it three years ago from the market, so still in its early days, but it's hard enough. And then we have our own nursery, generating all our own trees. This is a polytunnel full of trees growing in air pots. Uh, in, this ton in this one tunnel, there's something like 500 different species um, represented right across that tunnel. So I'm, a, I'm going to plug air pots. I'm a believer in air pots. And we'll buy, uh, in the next three years, our entire nursery will be converted over to this system of, of growing. Um, and very successfully. We turn trees around very quickly and, it, and we establish them in the nursery very quickly as well. Into the ground. Another interesting genus and taxon is uh, Fagus Hayate. This is a Taiwanese beach and it only occurs on this one mountain ridge in Taiwan, so it's very, very vulnerable. Um, here it is in the nursery, in our box, from seed. It, it mainly produces seed every 10 years. Very, very shy flowering, hence why it's so rare. Um, we managed to get seed sent over, and here it is growing in the air pot. Um, what we have been doing though is trial and grafting, and uh, we've grafted Fagus hyatae from the, the trees that we've raised, grafted them onto Fagus sylvatica very successfully, and it's going to be a strong plant. And this girl, Julie Ping, and Dr. Fujin Pan, they've come all the way over from Taiwan. She's doing a PhD on them on the, the species, and she was absolutely amazed to see what we were doing. And then, of course, the important thing is getting it in the ground and establishing it successfully. And we pioneered tree planting technique. So we go wide circles, shallow pits, only a spit deep, so the depth of the air pot, uh, and square holes, so that the tree roots can break out of those corners. The weakest part of that hole is the corners. If we if we dig a round hole, we're creating a pot system again, and we need tree roots to get out quickly. And most trees, 95% of trees in the UK are killed by being planted too deep. Everybody plants trees too deep, so planting depth is absolutely critical. We have many old trees, like this catalpa, collected by Ernest Wilson, a famous plant collector. Um, this was collected in 1908. This is the original specimen that's starting to die back now. And, uh, and so we have a conservation problem at Kew where we're doing lots of grafting now. So grafting these old plants because they may not occur in the wild now or we may not be able to find them and bring them back now. So we're, we have a grafting bench at Kew and at any one time we could have 20 or 30 different species growing in this, uh, in this bench. 
we quickly get them in an airport. Here's a, a one year maiden in, the, in an airport and then out into the ground. So that tree has gone from, um, from the adult through to the, uh, to the grafting bench, to the tree on the left, and there it is in the ground, growing successfully now to replace the old one. And then finally, um, a lot of our trees suffer from compaction. 1.5 million visitors a year, our mowing equipment is getting bigger and heavier, taking tractors onto the ground, and, and they're suffering badly from compaction. So we use the air spade to, to break up the ground around the tree. Uh, and fire up the mycorrhizae, the natural mycorrhizae, and the mulch that takes food down to it. And, and we can turn trees around in health, health wise between two or three years and basically replicate forest, a forest surface um, and, and get the tree to think that it's growing in a woodland, which is where it, its comfort zone is. And of course, you know, we want to show our trees off to the best. This is a treetop walkway, 18 meters high. 200 meters long, so you get a really good aerial view of the Arboretum from up there and see trees from a different perspective. Children love it. We've had something like 6 million children over that since it opened in 2008. And if you want a good person to plant a tree, use the Queen. She's really good. And she's always successful. I've never known a tree fail that she plants. So uh, she plants lots for us at Kew, and I can guarantee they'll grow. Thank you. But uh, first of all, I want to start to introduce our company. Deep Dirt Trees is quite a young company. We are only 20 years on the market. And uh, we have been established with one main reason. We had uh, two large projects there in London. One was Canary Walk, and the other one was a water shopping center and the clients couldn't find any trees in the UK so all the plants were imported all the trees were imported from Holland and from Germany and they were looking for a nursery to containerize these trees for year-round planting since no one my now colleagues was willing and able to do this the client decided well I have to set up my own nursery and they bought the pig farm 140 acres, hired a few good people, hopefully nursery people, and just imported all these trees and then started containerizing them and using <laughs> using the airports, which for the first time this was done, I think Jamie will correct me on a very large scale. The biggest projects we do in the UK right now are trees clients ask us containerize it please. We don't want to wait for autumn or for spring. Planting seasons are normally bad, the weather conditions are not right. We need to have the trees available regardless of the number, the size, available for all year round planting. That's why a lot of trees we containerize are basically sold already by the time <coughs> we containerize them. And then we keep them there until they fall them off. Of the nursery. Summer planting becomes more and more popular. I think on an average year we probably supply between 40 and 50 percent of our trees in the summer months, meaning May, June, July, August. Doesn't matter how hot, how the weather conditions are, but most almost 50 percent now are going out in summer. Not the traditional way, autumn, winter, when it would be perfect for the trees in more fairness. As a nursery and as a grower, I would prefer to plant everything in autumn. Is for a lot of projects more possible. Therefore, the airport is just absolutely perfect for us. And uh, a lot of the trees we have to put on a cable and support system to make sure they're not going to fall over. But when you look at all of these specimens, they're all grown in airports, they're all standing above ground. And this is one of these massive benefits that we feel. You don't have to support them. These trees, because of this perfect root ball which is full of fibrous roots and a very nice flat surface. When you want to plant a tree like that, it doesn't need any staking, it doesn't need any underground guys. Some people still do it but you don't really need it. They're absolutely fine without any support above ground. So imagine when you want to plant them in summer, you can save a lot of money and labor by not staking and underground guiding. <coughs> 
these are the sort of the smallest trees we do 14, 16, 16, 18. And it goes up. This was done for a contract. And this is another big benefit. We all know about the benefits of the very nice fiber streets. By using the airport, for example, you can create different shape of new as well. And you see here the metal trays we have used, lined with airports as well. That was a specification by the client. In this case, it was Canary Wharf as well. A lot of these trees were planted with these metal crates, knowing that they have to remove them in two or three years' time when the project continues and the road is going to be wide. Preparation summer, middle of summer, you can see the square shaped root balls done by airport specification by the time. <coughs> Again, are so small, so they ask us to create a square root ball and very shallow as well. With all these trees are about a meter in girth, but the roof walls are quite small. We don't have what we can do there. From the roof, this for example, this is a Liverpool Shabasi Park. Everything was specified to be grown in container in airport. And we had to keep everything for two to three years. And this is actually a roof guard. This is a multi-story car park which is underneath this building. The entrance is from the other side. And everything had to be lightweight cotton moss, very, very shallow roof walls. Some of the really big trees that are only 400 centimeters in root balls. Very wide, I look really more like a pancake. Meter 50 wide, but only that. <coughs> if you have a year or two years in the container in the airport, you can actually do that as well. And this is all on top of the multi story bar hub. This is something that Tony might remember. Many, many years ago when we when I first met Tony, he came up to see us, he was after some really large oak trees. And normally when you have somebody walking in asking for large oak trees, you expect him to buy 20, 25, 25, 30, maybe 30 centimeters. In this case, it was even bigger. So we went for as big as possible, and they had their tree top walkway, and so we selected, uh, Tony selected some of these oaks, and then was ready to supply, we put one tree per lorry on the lorry, I don't remember how heavy they were. Eight tons. Eight, eight, nine tons. Yes. We couldn't get them in. That was slightly difficult. Yes, very, very narrow accident if you will. But it was uh, both successful, very successful, very good driver. That's on. This is images of Tony just off on site, planting them. They look huge, they look huge on the lorry. They look amazing when they leave. You actually go to a queue, they're so tiny. Compared to the real trees, they have a queue. I mean, it looks big, but compared to what's on site. You know. We didn't have to lift it that high. I just said to well, the just, show just it. lift it as high as you can. It's just yeah. a show exercise. That certainly makes it big. Untying the crown is a, is a very important thing as well for big trees before you plant and try to untie them. Yes. Otherwise you have to send somebody out. Mm -hmm. to... Again, you can see the perfect shape of the airport. Perfectly flat. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, really. As long as, as, long as your tree pit is nicely prepared, planting a tree like that is straightforward, very, very simple, very easy. The garden bridge they will do in London. And uh, the opening time is, is Autumn 2018. Working on it right now. We have selected all the trees in throughout Europe, really. Some trees from Italy, some from Holland, some from Germany, some already at Deep Dirt. We are containerizing all the trees for the project at Deep Dirt, all using the airports. And you can imagine on a bridge, on a structure like that, soil and weight is a huge issue. So everything we have to, we have selected plants where the maximum root ball depth will be sort of 300 or only 400. But when you see some of the specimens, it is actually quite scary. But it's, it's doable, we've done it before. So now we're going to lift everything as we're doing it right now as we speak. We bring it all together with extremely shallow root balls and everything then will be potted at deep down. We have two years basically to get the trees established to create this very nice fibrous solid root ball. So delivery for all these plants will be spring, summer 2018. So we basically have two growing seasons, and by then everything has to be perfect. This is a footbridge, which uh, goes from the north to the, to the south, it's a brand new bridge, steel construction, and it's only open for pedestrians. So there will be no cars, nothing. It's really a truly new garden they're going to build over the Thames River. 
and that's going to be quite a very exciting project. There's a lot of people are against it, a lot of people are supporting it, as, as, as always with these huge things, 200 million pounds on the, on, the, on the public footpath, if you would call it like that, it's quite a lot of money. But nevertheless, it's a very exciting project, and I really look forward to work with it. And uh, yeah, hopefully, that everything goes according to plan, that in two years' time, or two and a half years from now, we will see something like this in Ireland as a new landmark. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for this invitation. I'm very happy to be here with you to share our experiences. And uh, my name is Benedetto Celeri. I am a landscape architect. I am a founder of PAN Associate. This is my uh, associate, associate who works in the field of landscape, environment, nature. I would like to show to you some who uh, project we are working on in this month, in these years. And after, I would like to show to you the project of Expo 2015 in Milan. Expo. Expo was a big project, you know, as you already know. The area of Expo is placed on the northwest part of Milan. The place is terrible. Because we have a terrible sprawling, we have two big highways, a big railway, also a high speed line, a big prison over there, and a terrible sprawling on the boundary. But we have to reach a beautiful place to have a beautiful place to have a beautiful landscape. This is the area before our project. And this is the project. We think, I think, it's important in this case to have a story to tell. <coughs> because Expo has a story to tell, feeding the planet, energy for life. And we think that we with the landscape project, we can tell a story. And I would like to say an important story, the story of, about the relationship between man and nature. How are the impacts of man on nature? And how are the answers of the nature because of these impacts? For these reasons, we have different landscape with some more natural, some more urban, some agricultural landscape. In a, often, all these future together, because we think it's very, very important to reflect on this, to reflect on the city, of the future to reflect on the city of the third millennium. This is a big project, of course. We used over, over than 12,000 big trees, uh, native trees, big and with a natural shape, over than 85,000 shrubs and a lot of aquatic plants, herbaceous, and so on. We used the airport system for us was real, a, a real necessity because we plant, planted this big quantity of trees in few months and we had the, we planted the trees in all the seasons, also in the summertime and in Italy is very hot in the summer period. And uh, also because of we need to have big trees with natural <coughs> shape. We uh, don't cut any branches. We don't uh, want to reduce the crown. And for this reason, it was necessary 
the SSL to use airport system. And it works very, very well. Uh, this is uh, a nursery. We had over than 20 hectares uh, for our uh, trees, for, for the trees of Expo. This is an example of a big tree, multi stem with a natural shape, very, very high. And we need to use this, this kind of plants. And I think these kind of plants are really, really wonderful. I wrote a book about this experience uh, called Moving Forest. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, okay. I think uh, I want to thank Jamie, Susie, Massimo, because they decided to read you this book. Uh, I want only uh, to spend a few words about the title of this book, Moving Forest. Moving Forest recalling the Shakespeare moving forest of Margaret. But in this case, our forest, our big community of trees, brings life instead of war. And this is the reason of the title. I hope you like this book. What about the future of this project, of this area? We don't know, because we are in Italy, but <laughs> we know that after the removal of the pavilion, we will have the landscape. And I think also a beautiful landscape. Thank you.